pick up stuff. But you have to produce everything in a different way. You have to Absolutely. yes, and definitely that cost has to be correct. But, but as uh, so rightly said, maybe the cost goes up by five or ten percent, and the value you are achieving is uh, more like hundred percent. But uh, are we really paying to the farmers? Uh, that is what the fair trade certificate is saying. Sometimes they are not. No, but I know that fair trade is with yes, because I work with these people. So definitely, the, no, the, thing is, uh, the point is that. What they say, fair trade, you can get a certificate, you pay farmer 10% more, yeah. but you use that as a technique Absolutely. to... You get much higher. Yeah, yeah. So it's not fair, fair trade, is what you're saying. It's not fair trade from a consumer perspective. You know, but at least somebody else is getting it. Now it's my call. How much do I... So, I say the other sacrifices people. All the brands, when the Bangladesh uh, disaster happened recently, when that building collapsed, a few hundred people got killed. Now, all those brands have run away. They say, no, no, we won't do any business with Bangladesh. Not because they, have, uh, they may have some love for people, but it's still there, there. Because, yeah, the bad is very cheap there. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, they so what they're doing now is they're, they're involving a lot of NGOs. And they're saying, as an NGO, you certify for me that these people are living in good conditions, that they are not being tortured, that uh, there are no atrocities being done, or they're only working for eight hours a day. So, there is a code of conduct that is coming. You know? The code of conduct will get. So, I'm not saying that the process of doing this is fair. Please don't get me wrong. Maybe the SGS who's doing their auditors also can't. I don't know. But I'm saying the, the rules of the game are this. That if you as a consumer, now you have a doubt as a consumer, so that is why you will not buy this fair trade. No, actually I want to highlight this thing. I totally agree with you. Just I want to highlight that the buyer who is asking for this fair trade, actually they are not paying that much money to the manufacturers. And that is not getting adjusted anywhere. Right. Like they are asking so much uh, visiting uh, from CR, uh, CSR point of view that you fire, fire should Ah, okay. the building. No, I but there is a multi-story building and there are 5 or 6 uh, garment factories are running in the same, same building. Yeah. And there is no other scope because the price of land is very costly in Dhaka also. Right. So there is no one floor like one ground floor on right. factories that the uh, buildings are multi-story. Multi -story, yeah. So that, that, that is also a cost perspective and there is overall development of Bangladesh is not there so they can't go to some other places also. Yeah. Like apart from Dhaka you can go to Dhaka or somewhere else. But, <coughs> But yeah, uh, so that's why everyone wants to become in Dhaka and they are doing all the business in multi as well. And they are not paying that much money to the... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I, agree with you. I agree with you. So what I would, if I were a government manufacturer in Dhaka, you know, I would see this coming. And I have two options. One is that I keep working on my costs, uh, somehow managing my business, which is not such a happy business. Or the other is I say, no, no, you know, this is going to get worse. In, in the sense that my customer, whether it's Tommy or whoever, it's going to divide, demand far more compliance. That's what I mean. So what I will do is, whatever the cost, but I will create a very highly compliant factory. Let's say, look, I want to 100% meet these compliance standards. Now you've got to pay me for this. Yeah. Now, now, whether that business case happens or not is something which is a negotiable issue. But it's my belief in India, it's happening today. Many companies are becoming 100% compliant and are being able to meet them. Yeah, they have improved, but that's, what, that, that's the one of the reasons that India is losing their export and is moving to the moment already they were never cost is increased and now we are all compliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you the book. Uh, you know, cost is like water. It will always flow to the lowest level. So if you're playing the cost game, India was playing the cost game in government for too long. And I tell my colleagues in government, it's your fault. Why for 30 years? What is your so I, I keep telling people, you know, you keep cursing labor and work. A government manufacturer, what is your claim to fame? Why should we make you so much money? Why should we not have a BMW 7? Because you have actually got labor, you know, which is cheap. Now today when the labor is becoming expensive, you are living. In these 20 years, you should have added some other value. <coughs> From manufacturing alone, production, you should have gone to logistics, you should have gone to technology, you should have learned to add more value than only produce. Because this is the writing of the wall. It's happening to our video industry today. Our video industry is not the same thing. Your English speaking, please come and send you a car. Come, have a nice canteen, and for a full day you speak to somebody in America in an American accent. Today the guy says, sorry, I'm fed up with this. I want more money or I'm out. Or I want to do something more meaningful in my life. And guess what? So on the one hand, uh, the, the businessman has this problem. On the other hand, uh, his costs are going up. On the other hand, somebody in Bangladesh or, uh, or East Africa, in Ukraine or uh, Bosnia is willing to do it. Is English as good? Or Sri Lanka? for much cheaper price because of the cost. So, what I'm trying to say is that if you don't understand the whole model as a businessman and you say, my only cost is manpower, my only claim to pay is keep this cost down, don't pay ESI, don't pay PF, and my only value add is production, 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 then you're asking for trouble because this part of the globe is changing. 
very rapidly. So it's not only price, people are wanting to know. There is a company called uh, this, uh, uh, Nature, uh, Na Nature and More. Yeah, that's the name, Nature and More. So if in Europe you buy uh, a vegetable off a store, uh, like a department store, uh, Albertine or whatever they are, like all that. So if you pick up, uh, in, some of them will have a label, label called Nature and More and they have a barcode. Yeah, these are obviously more expensive vegetables and foods. And if I take this barcode or this number and put it to the Nature and More website, it will take me to the source of where this vegetable came from. This apple, where it came from Kashmir. And it will give me a story about the village of Kashmir it came from. And what are the lives of people around that area. Maybe the photograph of the family who's got this orchard, you know, they've got 10 trees, and they will all be smiling in their future. And I can make a contribution directly to them, I can know more about their life. Now in India, let's say, who the hell wants to know about somebody in Kashmir? I don't even know my neighbor, I don't have the time for it. But in Europe, this is highly successful. Again, because there is a benefit or a less sacrifice. Because in Europe or US, people are beginning to see, they, they have a guilt that they, they have that quality of life by denying that quality of life to somebody else in the planet. So by contributing this little 10 cents more for a coffee, by doing this nature and more sticker, by doing this traceability, at least getting satisfied that nobody was economically crushed in this whole bargain, they feel better. So if I'm a vegetable grower in India, I would say, hang on a minute, why am I always worried about the cost of uh, labor on my field, or uh, etc, etc. Let me get out of this nature and more cost. Let me talk to somebody. So when the retail, whenever the BJP government allows them to come, when they come, there will be lots of these accounts at the retail. Now it can be our case, but we never need it. So we always have a political discussion about this. But the reality is that on the benefit side, so you choose which value. And the end product of what, what uh, this whole thing is, and that is why to me there is nothing called a market. I don't know anything about a market for capacitors, market for sure, I don't know. It doesn't exist in market. What exists is a market segment. If I make shirts, I make shared shirts for people between 20, 30 years who earn between 1 lakh and 5 lakhs of rupees, who party at least twice a week, and who are about to get married. Now the moment I have this specification of my market, from a large world as my market of shirts, I have zeroed in to a segment. The narrower the segment, the better my business can be. That is my story. Why? Because the narrower the segment, I can map this for it. What kind of a design would a person like that want? So do you make shirts? Yes. Who do you make for? Oh, the world is my market. You know, Italians have come to my country and bought. The Germans were here yesterday. And you know, I also sent it to somebody other. And that's a very difficult business to handle. I know from this that this is going to be a cost business. His only claim to fame is going to be lower and lower cost. He cannot do anything else. But somebody who tells me, no, 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 sorry. My shirts, Tommy said that and they all felt very bad. Tommy said, my shirts are not meant for Asians. We said this was a ridiculous discriminatory statement. Maybe he made it in that light, so I'm not defending him. I also didn't like the statement. But if you look at it from a segmentation perspective, it's a very good statement to make. I only make designs for the white skin. What's wrong with it? From a market segmentation, obviously he should not have said it in the position he was. But that is what we are doing. If I'm making spectacles, I make it for students who are getting their first specs. Everything will be different about it. The design, the way my shop looks, the way my logo is, what should it be called, how should the logo print be written. If I'm making for people who are 60 plus, uh, who need now a big specs, one that they don't lose it everywhere, which they can continue to replace, should not be too expensive, bulky, doesn't have to be necessarily attractive in design, I will be a completely different company. So the narrow of my segments are, that's why the low market, the only market segments. And if I see a market segment, so but Deki we said it is through a B2B. We said we are capacitors for lighting. So we won't do SMT. You don't need SMT. What is so critical about uh, a lighting capacitor? Well, the light goes a thing. If the capacitor fails, the light will fail. Then we don't attack that. That's our logo. In fact, we do these uh, brochures for each segment. And we call them primers. So the primer for lighting says, if we fail, there will be darkness. So we take it that seriously. Awesome. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to do, we have set up a huge lab like this, the size of the room, where there are hundreds of bulbs all the time on with our capacitors, day in and day out. So when a customer walks in, he says, my God, how much of my business is lighting? So 60% of our business is lighting. Now, immediately a lighting customer says, this is the guy I want to buy from. Nobody else. So all my
bit of the time to get into that business, they can't. Because what I have done is I have chosen my set. I have understood. So what is the value of somebody who does IT? Capacitor is available in the of the world. A Philip says, look, the capacitor should not pay. I want 100% reliability. So who will give them that reliability? Everybody can say it's 100% reliability. They want to see a lab that shows that reliability. They want to talk to people who only think of lighting all the time. That's what my people are, my engineers are there. So we know that a CFL light has more than 105 degrees centigrade to the temperature inside. Because you put a light upwards, it's a down lighter. So the heat is going up. So the light is creating heat, it's getting trapped in that small area. In this project, if I touch it now, and my finger will burn. It's that hot. So they're going a whole lot of fans to dissipate that heat. That is why we switch it off also the fan will be on for some time. Yeah. So, so heat can kill electronics. It's one of our worst enemies. So we have to understand heat. Now the moment somebody walks to my and I give him a five minute lecture on heat, I show him the equipment I have around heat and how I measure it and how careful I am about it. He says in his mind he is already sold. So I am trying to tell him reliability without using the word. I'm saying we breathe, we sleep at night. Don't worry. Your business is our business. So the moment that happens, everybody begins to. So why is it happening is because I have seen the benefit. The benefit of his mind is design and quality. I need to show it from my angle, not by cutting cost, but by doing something in my factory that gives them that. Yes, it's not just the model. I mean, I'm just giving examples to, to say that whatever business you want to think of, think of it from this model and you will know exactly how you can use it. If you don't think of this, I can prove to you any business is useless. Because you will only look at it from a cost angle, and I'll say somebody else will make it cheaper. Why are you getting this? The other sacrifice is also, we call it uh, profit. Yeah, the profit is, are people in the supply chain getting profit? It's also people, fair trade is an example of this. And physics, physics, we just use because of speed. But basically it means, also from a technical end. I don't want a laptop that can give me a shock. So I want also, uh, uh, taking care of from a risk, from a hazardous position. I don't want a toy, I cannot sell a toy in which the paint is not lead free because my kid might be biting on it. Yeah, and that will be extremely dangerous. That is what happened with Chinese toys. So also a lot of the, the physicality of the whole thing, the risk element, the peril, you might call it even peril, you know, the danger of that product, it should be designed in such a way there are no sharp edges if it is going to be used by kids. Yeah, like you say, plastic bag is not a toy. It, but somebody needs to make it in such a way that it's really not a toy and nobody can put it into it, etc. So if I can lower the sacrifice or increase the benefit, I'm in business, I'm creating value. Yeah. And not only, now don't, don't forget this guy in the middle, he's a nice, nice big fat here. The business in the middle, because I might be doing my business sitting here from a capacitor perspective, looking at the consumer of lighting. But I need to convince the guy in the middle, either the trader who takes it to the customer, who take, finally goes to the lighting, or to someone like this. Now what is this guy's reality? His reality is the same in a way like this guy, because he's also a business. He says, I have a cost box and I can also add some value. What value can he add? He can actually add the same five values that this guy can theoretically. He may or may not choose to do that. But what are the costs he has? He sees whatever I gave him as a cost. Right? But it's not only a cost in terms of money. And that itself is a big thing we discover. We call it total cost of ownership. Yeah. He sees over out. So when I go to someone like Philips, I say, hang on a minute. Don't give me that chart with China at 100. China is not 100. So what do you mean it's not 100? I see your rented cost calculation is wrong. Why? So I tell him, when do you get it from China? How much stock do you have? He said, oh, I have to keep uh, two months stock. Why? Because you know sometimes material is already on the ship, but our customs will not clear it. Because sometimes the port will overturn, there will be damage. Some of the equipment and some of the capacity will not come in time. So I give two months of it. I want to be sure about this. So what do I tell them? I said, so in your cost, put the cost of two months of capacitors, the inventory cost, the space cost, the finance cost. What happens if you change the model? What happens to the capacitor? He said, oh, you're right. So I said, so now we have got very smart. We always tell our customers, please tell me how many capacitors do you have in your warehouse? Not daily, anybody. And very happily they come and tell us, oh, we've got two crores or ten crores of capacitors. Because they think we are going to buy out their inventory. Then I say, how much of that is obsolete, which you will never use in your current models? So almost 50% is obsolete. Can you help me? Can you take them away? Can you sell it to somebody else? So he said, that is your cost. The cost is not just what you bought it. Don't show me 100 rupees is the invoice. But onto that invoice.
boys there are a lot of other costs to bear. So again, I do the same game that I'm doing there. I'm trying to reduce the idea of a sacrifice in the mind of my village buyer. If you buy from me, I'm in Noida, you're in Noida. You give me a call on Monday, you will get the material on Wednesday. If something is not used in the next week, return it. I'm giving you some extra facilities. So I'm trying to say, you know, that guy is not actually 100. He's actually 110. And I'm not 100, I'm actually 90 because I'm sitting right there. And we do it at each level. So you tell the purchase officer, how many times have you forgotten to give me a purchase order in the last year? He said, I'm very busy, I'm very busy, I'm very busy. This is happening at the sales manager and the purchase manager level. He says, sir, but have I not helped you out all the time? Aap ki nokri to kabhi kadre me ne aayi, very very sick. But anyway, you are very supportive. So can you do this with China? No, I can't. Please give me 2% more. That is the discussion they are actually having. So you can negotiate by telling the customer that your sacrifices of dealing with me are lesser than dealing with somebody outside. Or dealing with another company. Because cost is not the only cost. There is a, are there other four C's. Every time you go to a new customer, vendor, there is a chronological cost, which is the cost of time. I will have to take his capacitors or his shirt or his cloth and test it. I will have to put a lot of testing cost behind it. Be sure that this guy is at the same level as my last friend. So a lot of time will be spent in there. Somebody is coming from uh, far away. I am trying to sell some capacitors to Brazil. The only problem we are having is that everything is good with you, but the damn ship is taking 45 days. By the time it gets to me in two months, the cost of time is too large. Change. Every time I buy from a new system, there will be some cost of change. I am not used to it. That can also lead to some conflict or chance, a risk that because you don't know my systems very well. So we try again as a seller to tell the guy that look, you have more risk than only cost. It's risky to go to a Korean supplier suddenly. You are used to me, please continue to buy from me. Or if he's buying from a Korean and he's not buying from me, I go to him and, and put these benefits in his mind. And with that he again does the other benefit. So the value of the moment I understand this from, a, from, from that perspective, uh, is really uh, more than what we thought it was. Okay, I think we should take a short break.